Isaka Abuja Chapter warmly welcomes you to her 13th annual conference, ANCON 2021, taking place from the 4th to the 7th of October. Our theme this year is Building Infrastructural Resilience, the post-COVID-19 era. Over the next four days, you will connect with industry thought leaders, improve your knowledge, and grow your network. Join us online daily from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and our website www.isakaabuja.org. Isaka, advancing IT, audit, governance, risk, privacy, and cybersecurity. The next voice you will hear will be our speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly welcome Justice Ekegwe to ANCON 2021. Thank you very much um, for that uh, beautiful introduction. I appreciate your kind words. Uh, it is my honor to be back to the great Isaka Abuja annual conference uh, for the second time as speaker. Um, I am unable to join uh, the conference this year in person in the beautiful city of Abuja uh, just because of uh, the pandemic situation. But I, I would like to welcome all of you to this session from my home here in North Texas. We are gonna be talking about artificial intelligence. And I would like to do a quick um, uh, confirm that you guys are able to see my screen. Because I, I, am, I am sharing one, one part of my screen, okay? I hope you guys can see it. Otherwise- uh, Yeah, we can see it very well, yeah. Justice. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. Th thanks guys. Um, so, on artificial intelligence, your ingenuity still matters. Um, this presentation is not anti-AI. I, I need to get that out there real quick, just so we have that understanding. This is not an anti-artificial intelligence presentation. It is simply this, a sensitization of the audit and risk professional in the emerging markets, and particularly in Nigeria, about the importance of properly positioning for the oncoming artificial intelligence onslaught. It is absolutely very important that the audit and risk professional community be fully ready for what's about to happen. And the type of readiness we're talking about is not the templated type of readiness that we've all come to be used to. We're not talking about getting your templates ready, getting your building your programs. Now that, that's part of it. You have to have the ability to conduct risk assessments around artificial intelligence uh, 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 ecosystems, technology ecosystems or technology landscapes. You have to be able to conduct audits around artificial intelligence landscape, landscapes. But it, it goes way beyond that. Before you even get to preparing templates and building programs, it starts where? It starts right in your heads. Everything begins right here. And that's what this, the right here, our brains, what goes on in there, our perceptions is really what this um, presentation is about. So I am truly honored to have been asked um, by the conference committee to come here and talk to you guys about this. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at the promise of artificial intelligence. Absolutely very important. We, but how did we get here <laughs> in the first place, yeah? And then we'll, we'll talk about how our ingenuity will always matter talking about artificial intelligence. So let's get started. Uh, this is a piece of introduction, introductory comments um, the, that I put together to help all of us understand that 
AI has been a subject of intense interest for, for, for since it started. A everybody has been excited about it, everybody. The researcher community, uh, governmental institutions, businesses, consumers, everybody. You and I, all, all of you all in the audience today, you're all excited about artificial intelligence. If anybody in this audience says I'm not, you're not telling the whole truth. <laughs> You're not at all. I'm sure to the extent that you know what artificial intelligence is, you have intently looked forward to it. That is true. The downside of uh, that expectation is what precisely are we in expectation of? Is it something real or is it something superficial? the promise of abstract AI, the promise of abstract AI, the promise of abstract AI. The message I wanna deliver on this particular slide is that abstract AI never promised anything. Humans did, humans did, humans did. And so we've, we've been dealing with situations in the past couple of years since AI showed up in the uh, technology landscape. We've been dealing with this situation where out of our overexcitement, our cognitive biases led to the overclaiming of what AI can do for us. As I was preparing this presentation, I read, a, I read a, a, an article on The Economist that says, that um, the reality of AI is just now starting to dawn on a lot of people. But that's not to say that the onslaught of AI is gone away because it hasn't. It's still, it's still going forward. The proponents of artificial intelligence are still pushing ahead. Don't get me wrong, AI is great. I, I, I represented in this slide that um, the promise of AI has fueled the race to build the raft of technologies that today combine variably to create many AI-based products and solutions, resulting in technological leaps we could not imagine a century ago, and still points to a future of amazing things to come. Ladies and gentlemen, today in Japan, as you and I speak, the Japanese have built AI robotics that are able to play the role of a mate, like a wife or a husband, for they're currently using them on older people. So imagine a robot that's like a wife or a girlfriend that comes around and comforts you. So yeah, technology is doing great. What's that doing for, for the Japanese people? It's helping them combat loneliness which has been one of the driving factors for suicides among senior citizens. You're married, you've been married for 50 years, then all of a sudden your mate dies, then you're alone in old people's home. The Japanese people figured out, oh, how about we make a little that goes like this and comes around and just, and just says nice things to a man or to a woman who's lost a mate and that. So no, AI is great. It is great. I am not in any way, shape or form saying otherwise, but let's dig a little bit into the history of it. AI, this was, a, this was an article written, written by Mr. Rockwell Anyoha of the, uh, of, 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 of the Harvard University. Rockwell said in capturing the history of artificial intelligence, he said that science fiction familiarized the world with the concept of artificial intelligent robots. So for some of you who watch a lot of, a lot of movies, you might know Wizard of, The Wizard of Oz. You might have watched The Metropolis. And you might recall the heartless tin man from The Wizard of Oz. Okay, or the humanoid robot that impersonated Maria in Metropolis. Well, those concepts that were, were seen on television is part of what the scientific community 
has been able to constellate into uh, a raft of technologies, right? Um, one of such persons was a, a young British writer. His name is um, Alan Turing, okay? He suggested that humans use available information and reason to solve problems and to make decisions. He says, but why can't machines do that? Alan, Alan was writing. Why can't machines do that? So he, he proposed that machines could do that. So he wrote a paper in 1950 called Computing Machinery and Intelligence, where he described all these things. Now his paper was picked up by uh, researchers, Alan Newell, Cliff Shaw, and Herbert Simon in, 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 in the book they called The Logic Theorist. If you Google the proponents of artificial intelligence, you are going to see these names there. They, they are very famous. These are some of the biggest proponents of artificial intelligence. And, and I don't mean proponents in the way of, by way of saying, hey, yes, a little shiny thing out here that's really nice for you all. For you all. You know, you know, they'll say, they'll say, they're saying, this is going to radically transform life on earth. That's what they're saying, these guys. Anyway, their thoughts, which they recorded in The Logic Theorist, was then picked up by researchers at the, at the corporation known as RAND, RAND Corporation, right? Research and Development Corporation. So RAND guys funded a research around the logic theorist. And that was the beginning of what we know today as artificial intelligence. Now, remember, remember what was behind the initial thought around AIs. It is that machines could do what humans are able to do. It's, it, it's an equivalency theory that they, that they pursued, that they put forward out there. That was, that was the mindset that began artificial intelligence, okay? But this is a very interesting scenario here. This slide I'm showing right now. Look at all the items listed to the left of it. I, I, I hope you're seeing this to the left of your own screen. <laughs> You know, sometimes computers arrange things differently, but you might be seeing words like superintelligence, consciousness, accurate prediction, expertise, decision making, efficient use of resources. Do you all know what all those things are? These are the words that the proponents of artificial intelligence used to promote the promise of AI. They said, these are going to be super intelligent machines, more, even more intelligent than humans. They said, it's going to have consciousness, it's going to act like us. It's going to behave like us. Uh, they are going to make accurate predictions. They are going to possess tremendous expertise. They are going to be pretty crystal, you know, crispy in decision-making. Um, oh, and by the way, they're going to do things a whole lot more efficiently. They're going to do things cheaply. Uh, people are not gonna, they're not gonna use a lot of resources. They're gonna just deliver the you know, human desire in the most efficient way. This all came together to create the, a, a, a certain level of power that they bestowed on artificial intelligence. Promethean power. That power bestowed on artificial intelligence, the grandeur, grandeur, a certain level of grandeur. And it, it ended up building massive excitement, at least around their community. Now, when it came out to the rest, to the rest of us, all mortal men in, 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 in the regular world. Two things happened. For some, AI became trepidating. For others, AI became seductive. In other words, there were those who were, oh my gosh, this is, this is the future. We, we better embrace it with both of our hands. Seduction. To some, it was like, Oh my gosh, we're all gonna we're all gonna die. This is this is this is terrible. I I don't even think we should 
we, I don't even think we should be doing this at all. Well, you know who one of those people, uh, who, who one of those people are? Elon Musk. Look at what Elon, Elon said about artificial intelligence. He said, I think the danger of AI is much better, is much greater than the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. And nobody will suggest we allow the world to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Elon Musk, probably the greatest innovator of our, of our lifetimes. Probably the greatest innovator of our lifetimes. Sounded a warning. That's trepidation. It's trepidation. Is AI really that bad? It's a question. And for those proposing, uh, proposing artificial intelligence, is it really that seductive? Like, is it really that shiny object? Like, is, is that really what it is? Does it really have all that power? That's what this presentation is all about. As audit and risk professionals, what does AI do to you? Does it trepidate you? Does it seduce you? Which one is it? And on which side do you belong? So depending on which side we are, for most people, they became, they started to engage in what is called technology, technology quiche and fetishization. Which means sentimental admiration. It's not just that they admire artificial intelligence, but they become they became sentimental about it. They, 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 they became sentimentally attached to artificial intelligence. The danger of being sentimentally admirable of artificial intelligence is that it impairs our exercise of judgment. As audit and risk professionals, that's what we, that is what we need to watch for. Do you spend more time fetishizing on AI to the extent that it will start to impair your exercise of judgment. Okay. IT folks are known for fetishizations. I, I think y'all can say this. Y'all can agree with me on this one. <laughs> they are known for doing that, right? They always want to invest in the in the shinest object that's out there that's built by someone. I, I when I was when I was living and working in Nigeria, I thought it was I thought it was a Nigerian thing, you know. You, you know, we we love we love really nice things, you know. But I moved to the United States and realized, um, oh my gosh, it's it's the same things here. You you hire a new CIO, the CIO gets rid of all the applications that are in place and and gets new ones, right? Um, it, rather than getting the best out of existing applications, it prefers to get newer China China ones, right? It's a, it's, it's a global trend, really. So they are sentimentally attached to new technologies. And AI um, will be worse from that perspective. So then what happens right after that is a, a, a certain, from, a, from an audit and risk professional community perspective, we, when we become too sentimentally attached to artificial intelligence, we, we might start to engage in, 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 some, in some, some form of abdication. The moment our sense of judgment starts to impair, we begin to abdicate. A miasma of fear, the myth that AI is superior to humans, inferiority complex associated with that. If you think these are not real, think again. I, I have had the opportunity not too long ago to um, uh, do a risk assessment on our AI adoption. When I started asking questions, um, it was interesting that folks on the business side uh, who are building models, uh, utilizing AI tools, just had no idea how, how the AI platform worked. 
they didn't care. <laughs> you know, all they cared about was just the, the final product. And, and, and their response to me was that, you know, we think that the, the AI, you know, was doing it better than we did it back when we used that tool, used that tool, and used that other tool. They were like, oh, the AI is the AI tool. That's just, just way better. These are natural language processing tools, right, uh, that they are using, um, neural, uh, neural network type of tools. Uh, that that crawls our system environment to locate certain kinds of data, all right. And so, um, so they didn't care what else the AI tool might be doing, outside of just collecting the information they need and helping them build the models they want, predict predictive models. So I so I asked them. So then, um, do you, do you guys know? The architecture. How much do you understand the architecture of the of the AI platforms? They're like, oh, you have to you have to ask IT. They went to IT to ask. IT didn't have answers either. Uh, the, uh, this, this was one of our vendors we have relationships with. And the, event, the vendor I said, hey, look, you know, we have this product. You guys can try it for free, <laughs> for free. And they were very happy to get something they're not paying for. And this, this, is, this is precisely how, how it begins. It's how it starts. There was no care about the architecture of it. There was no care about configuration of it. There was no care about, about anything else. They just, they just used it as is, just the way it's presented. Open the interface, put in the, uh, the variables and start searching on the, base, on the basis of those variables. They didn't ask. They were supposed to because in, 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 our, in our three lines of defense model, they are the first line. They are responsible for risk. They, they have ownership of control. Or, or the other way around, they have ownership of control risk and responsible for controls. A second line, my responsibility is to govern what's, what's going on, oversee and monitor. They didn't ask those questions until we started asking. Imagine that I was also excited about the tools they have. Imagine that. Imagine that I was also equally excited about that. It would have impaired my judgment. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to ask the questions. The way they were talking about the tool, I didn't. Care. Well, I, not that I didn't care. I mean, I, I'm. I was happy for them that they have a tool that's able to help them solve business problems. But I was also very concerned about risks, operational risks, legal risks, compliance risks, credit risks. risk relating to reputational damage. I was very concerned about all those, using a tool that you don't know much about. So the challenge with abdication is that we begin to take the sides of proponents of AI. We're not supposed to do that. From a, a risk and control perspective, we're supposed to be neutral. Uh, we are supposed to be focused. So all these promise of AI, as great as they might look, we might have given a little too much power to AI than, than we, could, we could imagine. Think about it in terms of the, the, the type of power we've given to AI. We are already talking about universal basic income, UBIs, because it is expected, we have accepted that AIs are going to fundamentally change everything on earth. So people are gonna lose their jobs in healthcare sector, in financial services, in, 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 in oil and gas. We're gonna have robots do all kinds of things. So then the question becomes, how do we feed more than 5 billion people on earth? Ah, how about universal basic income? We'll give everybody $5,000 a month or maybe $10,000 a month. Why do robots do the work? We stay home and watch TV and get five, five to ten thousand dollars. That's trepidation right there. That's how much, that's how much those trepidated and those seduced have come together. We've agreed we're going to have universal basic income. UBIs. But I'm here to say, as audit and risk professionals, let's not have that mindset. Let's just we, we, let's just stay eagle-eyed on what businesses are doing in terms of how they are embracing artificial intelligence and make sure that we are completely focused, make sure that we are completely focused 
on the need to govern, manage risk, and ensure that there are controls present inside artificial intelligence tools and in the environment of artificial intelligence tools. Okay. There was a, many of you will know Pirelli tires very well. There was a Pirelli ad, billboard ad, ad, billboard ad that says, power is nothing without control. Power is nothing without control. So AI is powerful, but power is nothing without control, Pirelli says. Mr. Greenfield made this comment. He said, the distinction between power and control ranks among the central challenges of our time. Our Promethean technologies, our Promethean technologies offer us more and more power by the day. But the plain fact is that we haven't yet learned how to control them. He's absolutely right. Power needs control. Power needs control. Now here are the consequences of, consequences of abdicating controls to artificial intelligence. The first challenge there is unwitting abdication. Unwitting abdication. So as audit and risk professionals, are we unwittingly abdicating control to AI? In other words, we are, we are letting AI have it without even knowing that we're doing that. That's a challenge. Doing so could result in what is what Bezerman calls predictable surprises. Predictable surprises. These are things that, oh my gosh, it's happening. But we could have we could have predicted that this will happen only if we didn't abdicate control. Predictable surprises. And look, you know, in this presentation, I thought about bringing in something around you know, AI failures. I was like, ah, no, if I do that, um, as, as an academic researcher myself, um, who subscribes to, you know, to the uh, dissemination of balanced knowledge, I will have to also present the other side of it. All right. So if I said, here are AI failures, here are the reasons, here are some of the predictable surprises that might happen, I will have to also say, well, here are the successes that's happened even without presence of control. I didn't want to make that argument. That's not why I'm here today. I'll let you guys do that in, in, your, in your private readings. But, but yes, there are predictable surprises that will happen if we abdicate control of AI, if, if we abdicate control to AI. The other consequence is the unowned and often processes that may generate insidious harm without notice. This is, this is very, very huge with artificial intelligence tools. Remember how some of these run is you install them and have them learn how human beings do things, right? So you install them and you let them learn how human, being, human beings do things. And then you have them repeat that. A, an example of a, an artificial intelligence tool that does that perfectly is um, re, uh, uh, robotic process automation, RPAs. That's, what, that's how RPAs work. So, so you, 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 uh, you set up a client account you go through some processes, you create the account, you, you, know, you collect relevant information about the customer, about the product, about the services, about uh, terms and conditions, and you set them up in the system. Your RPA will be running in the background and observing what you're doing. And when you're done, your RPA will repeat those processes. When you're done, do you know what the RPA tool is doing while you're out? That's what unowned or, on, or often processes are. And that's just a sliver of an example. There's tons of ways that AI could become unowned or offered in the, in, in the course of execution. When processes are automated, whether it's via AI or otherwise, they essentially disrupt internal control frameworks. They actually do. Because now we've had, for example, uh, segregation of duties. You know, we've segregated duties. We say oh, we don't want to empower one person to, you know, uh, to do too much. Excessive privileges, right? Well, when you automate 
uh, SOD is one of the most attacked uh, controls ever relative to automation. All right. So that's another consequence of abdicating controls to AI. The other one is that technology technologies undermine controls by engendering hidden informal networks. Other technologies can do that too. Unrestrained AI could be worse. So what is hidden informal networks? Well, remember your org structure, right? We all have bosses. So I've got my boss, you've got your boss, I've got, we've got our managers, we've got our managers, managers. What the, uh, the hidden informal network is, is, is that, that other network where um, people consult each other and decisions are made outside of the organizational structure. So tools like um, messaging, right? SMS, you know, sending like uh, using Teams or uh, Skype messaging on, on the job, those engender hidden networks. So there's something you're working on. Under normal circumstances, you should go to your boss to ask questions about it. But instead of asking, you're asking the other people. You might be asking your boss's peer. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Instead of going to your boss. AI will make that worse. AI will make that worse. And so that's another consequence. Keep an eye on it. And the other thing, which is really, really terrible, is that managers are unaware of it. You know, senior leadership have no idea that these things are happening. And so what does that result into? What does that result into? The consequence is this. When managers are unaware of what's going on, is that senior leadership will be sending a different message, but down the line, okay, downstream, it's, that message is not resonating. In part because technologies and tools are enabling a disruption downstream. It's a huge consequence right there. All right, now, the next part, part that I wanna talk about is how our ingenuity really matters. Um, my research identified that, thank goodness, there are people out there who, who really, really understand what's going on. And they've been pushing back on these things, not to stop AI, but to just keep all of us prepared for it. Understand what really is at stake so we can really craft a much better, much articulated response to it. So these are not anti-AI folks as well. Lassen said that, Essentially, the intelligence of AI is concessionary intelligence bestowed by humans. Can we all agree on that? <laughs> can, can we just tell ourselves that, believe that to be true? Because it is true. Remember, AI is programmed. So do not be afraid of it. We are telling AI what to do. We're, we're telling AI to go learn how to set up client accounts. We're telling AI to go learn how to, uh, 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 how to validate uh, uh, income streams, revenue assurance. We're asking AI to go do it. So that it bestows on us. So as, as a result of that, we are, the, the power and intelligence we have is what we're actually giving to the machines. So not, we need to understand that. It's absolutely very important. All evidence suggests that human and machine intelligence are radically different. Therefore, why should we do it? No algorithm exists for general intelligence. We possess general intelligence. We cannot transfer general intelligence to a robot. AI can be programmed to do induction, deduction, but not abduction. Humans can do all three. We can abduct situations. We can arrest situations when they are, when they are going when when they when they are not when they are not working out as intended. We can stop something from happening. AI can't. If, if, AI is, if AI is shooting at people and they are dying, AI doesn't know how to know that, oh, this person is dead. I need to stop shooting right now. Oh my gosh, this, this water made somebody sick. I need, we need to stop giving people this water. If you have AI giving people water, the AI wouldn't know when that water is causing damage on the people consuming it. But humans will. That is abduction. That's the meaning of abduction. Okay. Our ingenuity will always matter. 
we need to understand that artificial intelligence is acquired intelligence. Therefore, we should focus on asking questions around what type of intelligence are we feeding the AI platform? As audit and risk professionals, those are the questions we should be asking. If you understand that artificial intelligence is acquired intelligence, then it helps you to ask the question, what, why are we feeding this type of intelligence to this tool? Why are we doing that? Our ingenuity will always matter because no matter how intelligent and autonomous AI, AI agents are, at least for the foreseeable future, they probably will remain unconscious machines or special purpose devices that humans uh, that support humans in specific complex tasks. Unconscious machines, they don't have life in them, all right? As digital machines, they're equipped with a completely different operating system and with correspondingly different cognitive qualities and abilities than biological creatures, you and I. Therefore, in general, digital reasoning and problem solving agents uh, only compare very superficially to their biological counterparts. We should be pursuing a consilience. How, how will, um, uh, 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 in what ways will artificial intelligence support humans is what we should be pursuing. Our role in societies as audit and risk professionals um, was very well captured by the statement by Arthur Levitt. Some of you might know him, might know him as a one-time chairman of US Securities and Exchange Commission. He said that as audit and risk professionals, we are guardians of financial truth. Therefore, we keep the sanctity of audited numbers inviolate. How do we do it? Two ways, two ways, professional judgment and professional skepticism. Are we ready to abdicate these to artificial intelligence tools? I don't think so. I don't think so. Look at what um, the former uh, uh, CEO of Deloitte said, Ms. Kathy Engelbert. Kathy said, and, 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 and keep, keep in mind, this is, this is why this statement is very profound and I had to, I had to grab it and put it here. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Deloitte, is actually one of the world's, world's world leaders in AI tool and technology adoption. But here's what Cathy said about that. I still believe the professional judgment and expertise that you all do in your daily lives, and as a long time auditor I did, is not replaceable, necessary by machines. I like to say I've never met a machine with courage and empathy and that can read body language and adjust what they say. It's really important that while we are going to digest larger and larger volumes of data and information, the key part is to use artificial intelligence to augment what, what the human does. I don't think any of the conference attendees will disagree with that. I don't think you guys will disagree with that. AI should only augment what humans does. So here's, here's a few food for thought here as we start coming to, 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 to a close. Here are some questions to ask yourself. These are, th these are takeaways for you and feel free to research these words uh, a little further from the context of artificial intelligence. Does AI have originality? Does AI have conation? Conation, I looked up the meaning of that word. An inclination to act purposely inclination, an inclination to act purposely. Does AI have that? Does AI have conscience? Conscience, which is the, the consciousness of the moral goodness. Does AI have that? Does AI have self-control? Does it have trustworthiness? Does it have instinct? Does it have ethic, ethics? These are all the crucible with which to measure artificial intelligence tools. In whatever context we intend to, to, to utilize them. So in conclusion, it's just this one statement. 
The risk is in fetishizing artificial intelligence. Guys, AI is great. Robotic process automation is great. Machine learning is great. Natural language processing tools are great. Uh, like on my job, IAD uses natural language processing tools for root cause analysis of issues, issue root cause analysis, all right? They use it to do thematic analysis on issues to identify what kind of, um, um, what, what words, all right, uh, are occurring the most in the way issue statements are written. So if it's access or system development or so you feed it those words. What, what do you care about? What do you want to see? What, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are the things the business, are, the business units are recording as root cause of issues? And they do a thematic analysis on those using a natural language processing tool. It's great. I've used it and it's amazing. But I don't fetishize about it. I got in a meeting with the, uh, the technology, the technology uh, uh, manager that coordinates the use of the tool in IAD to say, hey, I, I'd like to know how this thing works. And she explained that. There's no fetishizing in the tool. I, I love it, it works great. But I wanted to know, how does it work? And they gave me a walkthrough, you know, shared documentations with me. And it was, it was great to learn that there's a reasonable amount of control in how that tool is being used. Because you don't want in your thematic analysis be sending the wrong message that, oh, we, we are having these root causes, you know, uh, the high incidence of these root causes occurring. And therefore, we probably need to look a little closer in these areas. And then you go in and realize, oh, there's, there isn't really much. The natural language processing tool was wrong. That's what you don't want. So avoid the risk of fetishizing AI, avoid technology kish. Okay, Sent sentimental admiration of AI tools and placing dispropor disproportionate trust in the affordances of artificial intelligence. Judgment is your metier. Judgment is your stock in trade. It's your genius. AI cannot exercise judgment like humans do. But nevertheless, AI will always be a great partner to work with. You will always be a great partner to work with. Thank you for listening. It's been, it's been an honor. Thank you.